In this video, we're talking about area under the curve versus area enclosed by the curve and the x-axis. And this is a less common application of definite integrals. Not all textbooks are going to ask you to make this distinction. But if you run across a problem like this one, this is probably what they're talking about. So area under the curve is by far the most common way to look at area. And when we talk about area under the curve, it's also considered net area. So when you hear area under the curve, think net area. Versus area enclosed by the curve in the x-axis, so enclosed, would be gross area. The same thing as gross area. And the difference is just with area under the curve or net area, you treat area above the x-axis as positive and area below the x-axis as negative. That's what you do when you take an integral of a function. Any area that's enclosed by the curve in the x-axis that lies above the x-axis is positive and area below the x-axis is negative. So again, because that's what we do when we integrate, that's by far the most common way to look at area. But sometimes you're going to hear this area enclosed by the curve, and that means gross area, and that's where we treat area above and below the x-axis as positive. In other words, we're taking the absolute value of all of the area. So we could write here, area under the curve or net area, we're going to be doing positive and negative area. For area enclosed by the curve or gross area, we're going to be doing all positive area. So here's what that looks like. This is the information we've been given. We have this curve graphed in orange here. It's the curve f of x. And notice that the interval for which it's defined is x equals negative 2 to x equals 6. We've also been given these three pieces of information here. So we've been told that the integral of the function f of x, so this function here in orange, from negative 2 to positive 1 over that interval, so that's this interval right here, negative 2 to positive 1. So over this interval, area is negative 2.8. And because this is the integral, we're talking about area under the curve or net area, where we treat area below the x-axis as negative. So when this says negative 2.8, they're acknowledging that this area from negative 2 to positive 1 is all below the x-axis and that the net area there is negative 2.8. Same thing here, when we look at the integral of the function from 1 to 3, that means area under the curve or net area. So 1 to 3 is this interval right here from 1 to here, 3. So the area there is 1.2. It's positive because we can see that all of that area is above the x-axis, so it makes sense that they would indicate a positive area. Then this last integral here, the integral from 1 to 6, is going to give us an area of negative 3.5. So before we're too quick to label this third area as negative 3.5, notice that the interval here is 1 to 6. So that's the interval here from 1 all the way to 6, so this entire interval here. We already know that that interval includes this positive area of 1.2. So if we go ahead and call this area right here A, we know that taking the integral from 1 to 6 looks at the net area, or the area under the curve, on this entire interval from 1 to 6, which means that it's going to treat this area between 1 and 3 as positive, and this area A between 3 and 6 as negative. So what we would want to say then is that positive 1.2 plus A is going to be equal to the net total of negative 3.5. We would solve for a by subtracting 1.2 from both sides, and we would get a is equal to negative 4.7. So we can say then that this area between 3 and 6, this entire area under the curve right here, is negative 4.7. So in net area, or area under the curve, or the area you get when you take the integral, when you take the integral, if you get a negative result, that means there's more area under the x-axis than there is above the x-axis. Similarly, if you get a positive result, that means there's more area above the x-axis than below it. So now that we have our three areas, if we want to find area under the curve over the entire interval, negative 2 to positive 6, the entire interval for the function, we want to find net area. That means we take into account positive and negative values. So we would say that this is equal to negative 2.8 plus a positive 1.2 plus a negative 4.7, or just minus 4.7. And when we simplify here, we get a negative 6.3. So that means the net area, or the area under the curve, is negative 6.3. That means that if we took the integral from negative 2 to positive 6, we would get negative 6.3, because this net area is what we get when we take the integral. 
And of course, it should make sense that we get a negative answer because if we look here at the graph, we can see that we have more negative area, more area under the x-axis than we do above the x-axis. If on the other hand, we want to find area enclosed by the curve and the x-axis or gross area, we treat everything as positive. So we take the absolute value of each section of area that's enclosed by the curve and the x-axis. So instead of negative 2.8, we say the absolute value of negative 2.8 plus the absolute value of 1.2, plus the absolute value of negative 4.7. In other words, we just treat everything as positive. So what we end up with here is positive 2.8 plus a positive 1.2 plus a positive 4.7. And when we simplify that, we get a positive 8.7. And that's the difference between area under the curve and area enclosed by the curve.